Hello, and welcome back to the Python Beginners Plus course. This Python course puts into practice what we learned from the Python Beginners course and introduces different Python development pathways. In this tutorial, we start to explore what is a very researched academic subject matter, data sorting or data sorting algorithms. Here in the UK, bubble sort is a topic found on many course syllabus and is the impetus for creating this tutorial. Over the duration of the next three tutorials here in the Python Beginners Plus course, we'll take a look at three Python sorting algorithms, the bubble sort, insertion and selection sort algorithm. So that's going to give us a chance to further practice Python and also see how different types of algorithms can make a difference in performance. So we'll make a general assumption that you already know what a Python list is, know how to use or have used or have a basic understanding of if statements and for loops in Python. If you'd like a quick refresh, then head over to the Python core or Python beginners course. There's a link in the video description. In this tutorial, there are three phases. First of all, we'll go through and illustrate or describe the sequence of the bubble sort algorithm. Then we go ahead and implement the algorithm using Python to establish what we've learned in the first section. And then we go ahead from a practical point of view, we we'll measure the runtime of the implementation using the time it module. So just to confirm here, we won't be moving into asymptotic analysis. Here, we won't be focusing on big O notation. We are going to be looking at this performance um, from a practical point of view in this tutorial. Maybe that's something for a future tutorial. So we could describe data sorting as any process that involves arranging data, where it be alphabetical or numerical or both, into some meaningful order in order to make it easier ultimately to understand, maybe to analyze or to visualize. Ultimately, having a, a sorted list makes it easier to search through, or it can make it easier to search through. Uh, for example, we might perform operations where we want to remove or merge duplicates, um, or potentially compare two large sets of items to find out where they differ. So it makes good sense to potentially have the numbers ordered to begin with before we perform those operations. So let's start looking at the bubble sort algorithm. So here we have a list here of four numbers, and you can see it's already sorted uh, in descending order from left to right, four to one. So we want to sort this list. So we all want to sort this list ascending. So uh, the number one is on the left hand side to four. OK, so we apply the bubble sort algorithm to this list. So what we're going to find here is that the bubble sort algorithm has an outer loop and an inner loop or we can describe an outer loop and an inner loop. So the outer loop is going to iterate over this list four times in this case. So if we had a list of 10 items, then the bubble sort algorithm would iterate over the list 10 times, for example. So depending on how many numbers we have in the list will depend on how many times the bubble sort algorithm will iterate over the list. So we could just look at that as um, we need to sort this list. The bubble sort algorithm needs to sort every single number in this list. Therefore, it needs to iterate over the list the same amount of items that are in the list. So that gives you a description of the outer loop in our bubble sort algorithm. And we'll be able to visualize that once we actually start programming it, once we actually start developing it in Python. Right, so we have this outer loop that's going to iterate over this list four times. And now we have an inner loop in our bubble sort algorithm. So this inner loop is going to iterate over our list step by step, starting from the left hand side, position zero, for example, of our list. And it's going to check the adjacent number. So the first operation in our inner loop of our, of our bubble sort algorithm is going to take position zero, the number in position zero here, and it's going to check it against the adjacent number. So is four greater than three? So we run that process, uh, that calculation, and if four is greater than three, it means that these numbers will get swapped over. So it's important to understand here that the algorithm looks at the position of the number uh, to collect the number, 
and then we'll then perform the action of checking to see if the number in position zero is greater than the number um, in position one in our list. So if it is, in this case it is, the numbers will get swapped over. So now our bubble sort algorithm moves to position one of our list here and looks at the number four in this case, and then finds the adjacent number, so in position two, and then compares them again. So is four greater than two? It is. So therefore we need to swap these numbers. And then finally, our algorithm now moves in a loop, now moves to position two and checks it against position three. So is four greater than one? Yes, it is. So this swap occurs again. So that ends our first outer loop iteration here in the bubble sort algorithm. So what happens now is we, we're now going to iterate over this list again and then perform our inner loop like we did in the first iteration. So we're going to now check zero against one, one against two, but this time we know that the end item has already been sorted. So we don't actually need to check to uh, position two and three because after the first iteration of the bubble sort, the biggest number should always be right at the end, or in this case at the end. So we move through that process again. So we check position zero and one is three greater than two. Yes, it is. And then we go to three and one. Of course, three is greater than one, position one and position two, and then we move it across. Now we don't necessarily need to perform the action of um, three, position two and three, because those should already be sorted. So now we can move over to the next iteration of our bubble sort algorithm and, and then go through the inner loop again. And this time position zero and one, and in this case, two is greater than one, so it gets swapped over, and there we have the sorted list. So that gives you an overview of the mechanics of the bubble sort algorithm. So we would need to now perform that, or we need to reconstruct that process programmatically. So before we do that, if you would like to, then I'll just show you another example. Um, if you prefer to skip that, then just move over to the next section where we start to actually build the algorithm using Python. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. Here we have a bigger list. So this represents the first outer iteration of this list. And you can see here, we've got seven items in this list. So let's just go through the process again. So the inner loop, this is the first kind of outer loop iteration of our bubble sort algorithm. So let's have a look at the inner loop here. So of our first iteration. So we're just going to move this 10. So we look at position zero and one first, they get swapped over. Okay, so then position one and two, and then so on. So 10 is greater than four, 10 is greater than two. And here you can see that 10 isn't greater than 15. So Again, the algorithm isn't necessarily looking at the numbers, it's getting the numbers from the position and how the algorithm is going to move on to the next step is it's just going to move up to the next point. So this is a uh, position six here, position six. So it looked previously at position five and six, and now it's just gonna look at six and seven. So the 10 and 15 doesn't swap over because 10 isn't greater than 15. So we just the algorithm just simply moves on to the next position and then 15 will get swapped with one. So that's the first iteration of this bubble sort algorithm. So what we end up here with a list is five, six, four, two, 10, one, and 15. So the second iteration, now we just go ahead again, is five greater than six, no it's not, so it doesn't get swapped. Position one and two, I will now get looked at six and four, they will get swapped over and then six and two. You can see what's happening here in the essence of the name of bubble sort. You can see where this name is generated from in that the biggest numbers here in this case are kind of bubbling here to the, the top or the bottom of the list. Uh, so we run through this again, six and two, yep. So they get swapped over six and 10. So 10 is greater, so that doesn't get swapped and 10 and one. And then after this iteration here, this is the final list that we end up with. So now we have the last two numbers. Those are the biggest two numbers in our list. So for every iteration we move over, um, that will represent a, a number that's been positioned at the end of a list. So the next iteration, we'll move over five and four, we'll swap that over, five and two, um, that will get swapped, five is greater than two, five and six, and now that'll stay the same. And you can now see that the one is slowly moving back over into position, so six and one will get replaced. And then we move over again, four and two, 
swap that over four and five um, so that won't get swapped five and one you can see now the one is now moving back uh, to the left and here again two and four uh, four and one and then finally two and one and that gives us a, a sorted list here um, ascending order one two four five six ten and fifteen so just before we move on to having a look at the or developing the bubble sort algorithm it's worth noting that python actually has a built-in sorting function that we can utilize if you wanted to do some general sorting so here we have a list of numbers that we want to sort in ascending order uh, so let's go ahead and define that as our list nts so numbered numbers to sort and then we go ahead and print this sorted okay so the function is called sorted here um, the sorted function returns a sorted list of the specified iterable object so this is a list here so it's an iterable object this is what we learned from the python beginners course so let's just go ahead and give this a go and you can see what is returned here is a sorted list in order for us to actually perform some practical performance measurements on our algorithm we're probably going to need a bigger list so let's just go ahead and let's import random um, uh, the random int so let's just generate some numbers inside of our list here so we're going to use a rand int we're going to generate some numbers say between 0 and 100 so the first parameters here is referring to the numbers that we want to generate so that's going to be between 0 and 100 for example and then we'll create a simple loop here um, so we're going to use range and then for example 100 so let's just go ahead and create a hundred numbers in our list between the numbers of 0 and 100 and we just uh, try this out again we just set this off um, and see that in action so you can see we've got 100 numbers and they are sorted so this is going to allow us to expand and create larger numbers if we need that and of course larger uh, data sets here so let's go ahead and do that and now we've got a thousand numbers okay good so now we have a way of generating numbers for our algorithm so we can start to test the performance uh, when we start to use bigger data sets okay so now let's move over let's uh, remove this here so now we've got our numbered numbers to sort uh, let's go ahead and now let's think about building a function for our bubble sort algorithm so we're just going to call this bubble sort um, and we're going to take in our, our numbers that we need sorting in this case it's going to be a a list here of numbers uh, between 0 and 100 and there's going to be 100 of those in the list right so here we have our new function called bubble sort so like I explained in the um, preview here that bubble sort has an outer and an inner loop the outer loop is going to loop through the list depending on how big the list is so if the list is five it's going to loop through five times so that's the first thing that we need to set up so we need to obviously be able to understand um, how many times we need to loop through this list we need to count how many items that are in the list so let's go for the numbers to sort and uh, the length of this is going to equal len and then nts okay so we bring in our our numbers that we need to sort and then we go ahead and we check the length so if we were to just print this out see if this works so let's just test this out let's just uh, move this down so for the function first and then we're going to need to import again from random uh, oh, from random import uh, the ran int so we're gonna need that and let's go ahead now and just fire off the bubble sort as take in nts the numbers to sort and let's just give us a go and there we go so here we have 100 items in our list so that's the sorry the length of our list 100 
so now what we're saying then is we want to iterate over this list 100 times so let's uh, set out a for loop so for i for example in range and then nts length so that is going to set out a for loop which is going to iterate over our list um, the number of times that specified based upon the sorry the length of our list so in this case it was 100 so the range here is going to be 100 so that means we're going to iterate over this 100 times so if that if you're not too sure what's happening let's just go ahead and let's just print i let's just go for numbers 1 to 10 let's just keep it simple and range 10 so we're just gonna have 10 in the list here so let's just fire this off so you can see here what's happening is that we're printing out the numbers one zero to nine of course this is important to remember that we've counted the amount of items in our list but let's remember that when we use range it's going to start from position zero that's important to understand so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it's ten items or ten loops that are now um, or ten iterations of this loop so that's been generated from the length of our list so now we have the capabilities or now we have the outer loop set here we're going to loop over our list 10 times um, we now need to think about how we're going to iterate over the numbers so we can start to compare the position of the numbers in our list so we can start swapping them over so now we're talking about the inner loop so what we're going to need to do here in this inner loop starting from position zero we need to check the position the adjacent position position one in this case zero and one and we're going to need to check whether the number in position zero is greater than five and then so on so we're going to need a way of um, being able to on the second in iteration moving from zero to one so we're going to need some sort of counter which is going to move up each time we iterate so it then checks the next number so we're going to need to try and implement that but initially what we want to do is to make sure that we start from position zero to check position zero with position one so that's the first thing that we need to think about how we're going to get position one and then move from there now if you remember something else we need to think about is we need to stop iterating over these numbers at some point and remember every time we iterate over this uh, this number set the n number is always going to be in position so we don't ever need to check after the first iteration here we don't need to check the last number with the the number before so here we get to the end and 15 is swapped with one so when we go through the second iteration here of our list we don't need to check um, the last two numbers again because we know that this number is already in place so let's go ahead and now build our inner iteration so for uh, p in range so we're going to set out a range again which is going to be the length and then that's minus i so why minus i well for every time we do a outer loop iteration remember this i this i is going to start at zero and it's going to end at nine because we, we've got that from the length remember the length is 10 but the range starts from zero so for every outer iteration here that is performed this i number is going to go up so the first iteration it's going to be zero and then the second iteration of this loop it's going to be one two three four and so on up until the number nine so what we're going to do here in this inner loop is we're going to take that number so our, in the first loop here this number here will represent 10 so we're going to minus i which is in the first loop that's going to represent zero so we've got uh, nts length which is 10 minus i which is still going to be 10 minus one okay so that's now going to be a, a range of zero uh, to nine so let's just go ahead now and just print this out so let's just print uh, for example let's print p uh, so we've got yeah, a range of 10 so let's just go ahead and print these numbers out see what is returned oh, uh, okay so you can see the this is all the inner iterations that's going to occur um, or what p is going to represent so in the first iteration here it represents a zero 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, let's just bring this up a bit. Uh, seven, eight. So it goes up to eight. The first iteration is eight. And then in the second iteration, uh, the inner loop, it goes from zero to seven. And then the third iteration, it goes from zero to six. And so you can see it's a, uh, a reduced number each time we iterate. And what that's trying to represent is this idea of like, when we get, um, after each iteration, the numbers at the end um, don't need to be sorted anymore. So what's going to happen is that we're not going to check as far in. So here we can see we check um, way to the end. And then this, there's only one, two, three, four checks, for example. And then there's only four inner iterations and then two iterations and there's one iteration. So that is simulating that action. The fact that we don't need to, for example, on the last iteration, we don't need to check all these numbers because they are already in order. OK, so let's just go through this as it stands now. So we have um, a numbers to sort, uh, a list here of numbers between 0 and 10, for example. And here we're going to have a range of 10. So there's going to be 10 numbers in our list. OK, so that goes into our list. Well, sorry, our algorithm here, bubble sort algorithm. First of all, we check the length, which is 10. And now we're going to do the outer iteration. Uh, so here we have a range of 0 to 9. So there's going to be 10 iterations here in this um, for loop. So that's going to iterate 10 times. And then each of those 10 times, this for loop is going to iterate. So the inner loop is going to iterate over. And that's going to uh, be kind of a diminishing return here. So for every loop, we're going to minus 1. Uh, so that means it loops less every time it loops round. Right, so to begin with, remember p is going to uh, p is going to still be zero. So remember, although this is dis dis although this is, uh, on every loop, it's being reduced by one. Uh, p will still start from zero and go upwards. So p is going to be zero to begin with. Right, so because p is zero, now what we can do is an if statement. So now we're actually going to check. Um, the first number in position zero. It just happens that this P will iterate when this inner loop iterates, this P number will be moving upwards. So we're going to utilize that to check the next numbers against each other. So what I mean there is if I do an if statement here, so NTS um, P. So I get my list. Uh, my list is reference to NTS. That's my list. I get my list. I look for the item in position zero. So remember, P is going to, in the first loop at least, it's going to represent zero. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the number in position zero in my list. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to check if that is greater than NTS P, which is zero. And the next number is, well, plus one. So what I now have is an if statement, which is checking the position zero of my list against position P plus one, position one of my list. So if P is greater, uh, if P is greater than P1, whatever number is in P1, then obviously we want to do something. So if this is true, we want to take the numbers in NTS uh, position zero, and then we also want the number Let's grab the number from NTS, the position P plus 1. OK, and so we've got those two numbers and we want to replace them. So they should now equal NTS. Um, so the first number in our list should equal P uh, plus 1. And then our second number, um, we're kind of swapping over here, should represent NTS. And then whatever's in the zero position of our list. So we're just swapping over the numbers. So let's just go through this two iterations of this because this is this is done now in actual fact. Right. So we're going to generate a, a list here. Now, this is obviously a random list, so we don't know what's going to be generated um, without printing it out. But let's just imagine we've generated a list of 10 numbers. Right. So we've checked the length of that list It's 10. Now for I in range, so the range is going to be 0 to 9. So this is going to loop through um, nine, 10 times. Sorry. OK, so for each loop, we're going to perform this inner loop, right? So for P in range, so our range now 
originally it's going to be NTS, which is uh, 10 uh, minus I. I originally or initially represents 0. So that's 10 still. Minus 1 is 9. OK, so this is going to loop through 0 to 9. Um, or, or it's going to loop through 9 times. Sorry. Um, so 0 to 8, 9 times. So this is going to loop through nine times. So every time it loops through, we're going to get whatever's in position P. Now, originally, P is going to represent zero in the first iteration of this for loop. So position zero is greater than P plus one. Then we're going to swap them over. Now this iterates through again. Remember, this is going to iterate nine times. So now P on the second iteration is going to represent one. So now what we're doing is we're moving to position one and position two and doing the swap if it's needed. And then on the third iteration, this is going to represent um, number three. So NTS position three. We're then going to check it against position four and so on. So hopefully you can now see how this is going to move. Um, this P is going to allow us to move through this list, iterate over this list. And each time we're going to move or move over to the next position. So like we have here, we're going to then check this and then it's going to go to position three, four, five and so on. OK, so if this is true, um, so if whatever's in position at that time is greater than the adjacent number, we're then going to use that information to then swap the numbers over. OK, so let's just, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a typo here. So let's just get rid of that. Right, so let's go ahead now and give it a go. So before we do that, let's go ahead and just return go ahead and return NTS and then we go ahead and just uh, print this out shall we and there we go so we can run this a few times you can see that we've got uh, on each time we've got a different set of random numbers that have been sorted um, from left to right now we can sort this over if you wanted to sort these numbers uh, the other way around then all we need to do here for example is just change this so from greater than to less than so here we have a list um, that's in ascending order from left to right so now we swap this over here so now we're checking if p is less than um, the adjacent number and that will then sort the numbers in the opposite direction so hopefully at this point this is starting to sink in you can start to see what's happening how this algorithm is working as we set out in our aims at the beginning, we're now going to move forward to measuring the algorithm's performance. And like I've already said, this is going to be a very kind of practical approach to measuring the algorithm. Now, it's worth noting here that the performance measurements that I that was returned here in this demonstration might be different to yours. So this isn't necessarily the best way uh, on the most consistent way, sorry, of measuring the performance of this algorithm because my computer is different to your computer. It works at a different speed. I've got more RAM or less RAM than your computer. I may have more applications running at the same time and so on. There's so many different parameters here that may affect the performance of this algorithm in comparison uh, to um, the outcome and results on your computer. But once we start comparing the algorithms against other algorithms on the same computer, once we start looking at higher or bigger sets of numbers, um, we start to see um, the general performance of our algorithm. So first up, we're going to import time it. So this is going to allow us to measure the execution time of small code snippets. So our code, our code snippet in this case is going to be one of our algorithms. So in this tutorial, we look at bubble sort. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at another algorithm. And we'll be able to then, at the bottom here, we'll be able to kind of pass in, based upon the name of the algorithm, what algorithm we want to check the performance of. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, but let's just go ahead now and build a new function. I'm going to call this run sorting. So we're going to pass in the algorithm name and the data set that we want to um, run our algorithm on. And then from there, we're going to create setup code. So from main import algorithm. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this setup code to import this into uh, time it. So then we can actually then perform the performance check on this set of code, this algorithm. And so 
we're going to need to run that code within time it so we set up a statement here which is going to be the algorithm and then the data set that we want to actually pass in to the code so here is going to be a return a string which is going to be the algorithm name bubble sort and then brackets uh, nts which is actually the, the data that we want to pass into the algorithm so that basically is the same as um, writing out um, a, a call to a function so the algorithm name bubble sort and then the data we want to pass in so that's going to be passed into time it so right we now create a new uh, variable here time which is going to return or it's going to store the amount of time it took to run the algorithm the bubble sort algorithm so we're going to use time it and we're going to use repeat so here this is going to allow us to kind of repeat the sort so we can run the sort many different times because if you might imagine if we're going to run this if we're going to test the time how long it took for bubble sort to sort the data if we run this say 10 or 20 times we could take the average of those times and that would give us a better idea of how the algorithm is performing what's going to happen here with time it is it's going to return the the minimum time it took so here we can tell time it to um, repeat the process of uh, sorting data a number of different times and then tell us how um, tell us the minimum amount of time the least amount of time it took to perform that action so here we have repeat so here we're going to pass in the statement so remember that's going to be the algorithm name and the data that we want to pass into our algorithm to run our algorithm function and then we're going to pass in our actual function okay so we've imported it in the setup code and now we're going to pass that in so we're going to run this which is going to run our setup code and then time it is then going to uh, for example repeat the amount of time so repeat is specifies the number of samples to take how many times um, we want to, to do this so we get a sample of data and then we can actually then repeat that a number of times so number here specifies the number of times to repeat the code for that sample right so now we've got that in place that's going to set up our that's going to set up our, our test that's going to return the minimum amount of time it took um, to actually complete the bubble sort algorithm on our set of numbers uh, on our list so let's go ahead now and just print uh, something here so print the quickest execution time was uh, in minutes and then whatever has been returned there in time okay so now we just need to fire off this function so we're going to pass in the algorithm name and the data so we're then going to generate the setup code ready for time it and then the actual statement we want to run to actually run our function which should be bubble sort and then the name of the data um, so that all gets passed into time it we run this uh, once and then return the time it took to sort that data and we're going to print out the quickest execution time was in minutes and then the time so down here then we've just made a change here in our name main uh, section uh, so we've got our data set here so number 0 to 100 range 100 um, and then run sorting so we're going to run this function called run sorting now and then the name of the algorithm is going to be called bubble sort or the name of our function is bubble sort and the data here is the same nts right so let's just give this a go you can see that i've already performed this and here we go so you can see that you know 100 numbers is only going to take 0 0.0003 of a second which is very quick so let's just start ramping this up so let's go to a thousand so now you can see that it's taking more time um, so 0 0.04 of a second and let's go for 10,000 now you can see straight away 10,000 is taking a lot longer time in actual fact it took 4.8 seconds so you can see how increasing the numbers that need to be sorted also increases the amount of time it takes to sort so it probably comes to no surprise that the more data um, that we try to sort the longer it's going to take to sort that data so in actual fact the bubble sort algorithm which is a comparison based sorting algorithm or technique is generally considered an inefficient sorting algorithm generally like i said at the start it's one of the first algorithms taught in computer science courses because it's a good algorithm to learn and to start to build that intuition about sorting 
So I do hope that's given you an initial starting point for you to explore further sorting algorithms and in particular bubble sort. If you have got this far, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully I didn't disappoint you with the level of information that was provided. Um, I do apologize. Hopefully I explained at the start what it is we were going to cover and the depth we were going to cover the bubble sort algorithm at. And I do hope to see you in the next tutorial.